Good morning students. Today I am going to teach you the third topic of unit 4 which is laser for measurement of velocity. So here uh, velocity of any, uh, any uh, liquid flow or anything can be measured. Okay. So here we assume uh, fluid is flowing with a velocity of Vt. Okay. So it works on the principle that definitely a fluid will contain small small particles, minute particles. So when the laser is focused on these particles or these flowing liquid, the particles will scatter these laser beam in all the directions. Okay, and if you uh, if you uh, observe these scattered light by using any device called a photo detector, uh, uh, we can detect the scattered light and we can uh, find the frequency of that. Okay, so uh, it works on the principle that the, there will be a frequency shift or Doppler shift. Uh, can be seen at the photo detector when we compare to the original laser uh, frequency. Okay, so this phase shift will be proportional to the velocity flow. Okay, I repeat, the velocity flow uh, can be found by the uh, frequency shift that is recorded in the detector. So this is the principle of this uh, velocity measurement. Okay, so let's see the construction of it. So, uh, a device, uh, this arrangement contains a laser source and it is, uh, it is very similar to the previous uh, topic uh, and it is focused uh, to parallel uh, by using the lens and here it is given to the beam splitter. So, remember the beam splitter, what it will do? Uh, it will be, it will split the beams into two that we already knew it. But here, by using some lenses, the beam uh, the output of the beam splitter, the two beams will be made to focus on the same point. Okay, so that is very important that because of the lenses, the beams, uh, the beam, uh, the, the laser beam, the two beams are made to focus on the same point. Okay, so because of this, we we'll see an interference pattern. Just imagine, uh, uh, this is one beam. So the the single line I have drawn is with the two parallel lines. This is one beam, and this beam I have drawn in this way. Okay, so the beams will be having a phase shift of uh, sorry, the, some angle of theta. So that is the theta here. Okay, so because of these two beams intersection, uh, some interference pattern will be obtained. Okay, so when the uh, uh, when the uh, fluid is flowing, uh, because of the small particles, when the small particles will be striking with this interference pattern, it will uh, scatter the lights through all the direction. Okay, so that is the working of it. So when the particle is uh, uh, going nearby this interference, that is this point, this point, the the light will be scattered in all the direction. Okay, so at the receiver, we have a detector at the receiver side, and that scattered beam will be uh, collimated or focused onto the detector. Okay, so at the detector, if I see the uh, frequency shift, I will see I can see a Doppler shift or frequency shift. That shift will be proportional to the velocity flow. Okay, so that is the working of this measurement of velocity. Okay, so the distance it is it is equal, it is given by the formula uh, lambda. The lambda is the wavelength of the uh, laser beam and it is sine theta by two. So theta is the angle between these two beam points. Okay, all right. So at the detector, what will happen? I said a frequency shift will be det uh, detected. So that frequency shift will be proportional to the uh, velocity. Okay, as I already said, this is the mathematical uh, proof for the uh, 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 proportionality. So, the frequency at the detector will be proportional to uh, uh, the velocity and uh, it is shifted because of the Doppler shift. So because of the interference pattern, it is shifted. Okay, so this is the uh, frequency at the detector. Okay, so we will use a small factor that lambda, it is replaced with lambda naught by n. Okay, n is the refractive index, remember. So, lambda it is replaced by lambda naught by n. So, this is the frequency. Okay, uh, where a lambda naught is nothing but the wavelength of laser at vacuum. Okay. 
And now, uh, if you see the advantages, uh, this type of measurement, uh, if you see, there is no contact with the fluid. Uh, uh, so, the laser uh, device, uh, it is not touching any of the fluid. So, because of that, the flow is not disturbed. Okay, so it's flowing in this way and uh, I'm using laser, I'm uh, detecting the uh, velocity of it. So, uh, there is no uh, contact. So, that is one advantage. And second is, uh, because of this non-contact uh, testing, uh, sorry, the, the deduction, it is used for uh, finding uh, velocity for hot uh, liquid or uh, corrosive liquid where uh, in, inserting, a, uh, inserting a device for measurement of velocity is not possible. So for that application symbol, uh, this measurement is very very useful. Okay, and uh, uh, but uh, if you see the drawback of it, so the drawback is just I said the uh, the the small particle inside the fluid because of that small particle only uh, the some scattering takes place. So the drawback is if it is very clear fluid, if there is no no, no small particles inside the fluid this uh, technique cannot be applied. So that is one drawback. So because of that, we sometimes uh, we may need to put some scattering uh, small particles inside the flow in order to find the uh, velocity of it. So there also we have a drawback that uh, it is very much cost because uh, we should uh, add proportional uh, small particles into the flow. So that is this becomes costly. So it is applicable only for uh, measurement of fluid that is having small particles inside it. Okay. The fourth topic is laser for measurement of acceleration. So here the acceleration of any object can be measured. Okay. So here it uses two uh, techniques. First one is basic atom interferometer and the second one is cold atom gradiometer. Okay, so we will see it one by one. So first is basic atom interferometer. So this is the construction of this basic atom interferometer. Okay, so here actually what happens is the cesium atoms. So the laser, uh, the laser beams are uh, uh, excited using cesium atoms. Okay, so the cesium atoms is initially launched on this magneto optic drum. Okay, so in this point it is launched, launched on the magneto optic uh, drum. Okay, so from this uh, point the magnetic field is cut off and it is uh, allowed to flow on uh, flow as a fountain atomic fountain just imagine how a fountain will be the water will be coming uh, from the bottom to the top and it is flowing so that is that's the same concept here uh, atomic fountain means more number of cesium atoms from this mag magneto optic trap it is forced to flow like a fountain at this place okay so this uh, this atomic fountain is formed by using a technique of moving polarization gradient optic molasses right so during this uh, time what uh, uh, it is done is uh, all the atoms are now in fountain, atomic fountain state okay so now it is cooled cooled by using a series of pulses Okay, so at once it is cold, the all the cesium atoms, okay, the uh, the uh, this, the cold cesium atoms are allowed to maintain an internal temperature of ten nano kelvin. So this is the temperature, or uh, each and every cesium atoms should have. Okay, so understood uh, from this uh, magnet optic. Magneto optic trap, uh, the cesium atoms are allowed to flow like a fountain. So, at this point, some series of pulses are given uh, in order to cool the uh, cesium atoms uh, and to maintain the internal temperature of 10 nano Kelvin. Now, these cesium atoms are free from the gravity. Okay, so uh, 
during the where once the cesium atoms are free from gravity then only it can be used for finding the acceleration okay now the acceleration vectors or the gra gra uh, gravity vectors are allowed to interact with this freely moving uh, conditioned cesium atoms the gra acceleration can be accurately obtained okay accurately measured okay the second technique for measuring the acceleration is cold atom gradiometer it is very similar to the uh, previous uh, basic atom interferometer the only difference is there we used only one laser here we use uh, two lasers okay so here we use two lasers and uh, inside the laser cesium at, uh, atoms are used and that cesium atoms are allowed to propagate vertically okay so that is the three difference in this uh, 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 cold atom gradiometer okay so let's see the construction uh, construction of it construction and working of it so here this is the la place where the laser uh, uh, to the two lasers are pumped okay so these lasers are allowed to fall on the magneto optic trap which is very similar to the previous magneto optic trap so in that magneto optic trap what will happen the cesium atoms are allowed to go in a atomic fountain pattern so in the vertical direction so during this time uh, uh, what will happen the atoms the cesium atoms are cooled okay and and uh, similar to the previous some series of pulses are given in order to maintain the uh, the, uh, the cesium atoms the cold cesium atoms in an internal state and with an internal temperature of uh, 10 nano kelvin so it is very similar to the previous one okay but here what happens uh, two laser beams are propagating vertically and again two simultaneous measurements are taken okay so two simultaneous measurements are taken uh, that measures the lasers okay so it all will happen uh, the the cesium atoms are now cooled and it is in the internal temperature of 10 nano kelvin that we already knew it so this is now free from the gravity so now it is allowed so it is allowed to uh, allowed to interact with the gravity vectors that is given by these two elements or these two measuring devices okay so these are the detectors these these two are the balanced detectors okay so it is allowed uh, to interact the cesium atoms are allowed to interact with the gravity vectors now what we get is differential acceleration okay in the previous we got acceleration but here we have two uh, measuring device so as a result we will find the difference between these two so that we got differential acceleration so the differential acceleration it is proportional to the difference in the phase shift so obviously the laser is traveling from this point to this point there will be a phase shift this between these two points so these measuring device will capture two different phases so that phase shift will be proportional to the acceler differential acceleration so this technique add measures differential acceleration okay